You know, if I had to do a parody of modern video games, it would obviously be a shooter, right? And I'd have some kind of angry white guy with a deep voice as the protagonist. I'm coming back for you. It's a touch on the industry's predictability, or you'd have to throw in the cover and shoot mechanic. Well, some blood. That's a bad language. These cartel bastards mean business. Actually, I'd... I'd just make Army of Two, The Devil's Cartel. This is already a parody of modern games, only... only it's not a parody. I, I don't know who to trust anymore. Turns out, the truth is out there. And to find it, you can either go track down some cigarette-smoking man in a dark basement at E3, or you can play this game, The Devil's Cartel. The effects are probably the same. You'll walk out questioning the experience, reeking of smoke, and wondering if it's really as simple as it seems. I'm here to tell you it is, amigo. So just duck, cover, and f***ing fire. <laughs> the Devil's Cartel is the third game in the Army of Two series following up the 2008 original and its 2010 sequel, The 40th Day. Both of those games released to positive reviews on the whole, and that's a streak that's been broken by number three. Devil's Cartel has come under a bit of fire from critics, but as a guy with no prior experience with the series, I, I gave it a good, long look down my sights. And now I, and now I have to pull the trigger. RPG! You know, it's, it's not that this is a bad game. I mean, bad games are easy to review. You just point out what is usually a whole freaking list of reasons the game's bad. This one isn't bad. It's just, you know, there's nothing exceptional about it whatsoever. Again, it's, it's almost a parody of the current state of popular video games. It has this checklist approach to game design that hits all the notes it's supposed to and never goes off script. And that's not bad, at least not objectively. It's just, it's kind of boring. I guess one of the big changes is that the two-man army is different this time. The standard duo's been replaced by a new one. And again, I can't speak to the prior characters, but I, mean, I can't imagine they had any less character than these ones. I mean, it's a personal role I have to never be friends with someone who says bro in a serious context. I don't think I could, I don't think I could be friends with these guys. Salem, you still with us, brother? Rios! Get back! And as a result of the character's drabness, the story ends up being the same. You go through Mexico shooting Mexicans, and the whole experience feels lifeless. And it's strange because you know, there's some good ideas in terms of settings, but the game's execution misses the mark. The places end up feeling as characterless as the characters and the gameplay. And speaking of which, holy crap the gameplay. I mean, uh, cover and shoot city? Only with no real point? Like, you're awarded points for pulling off tactical kills, which then lets you level up, but after a while you notice that it doesn't seem to have much effect on the gameplay. You just keep covering and shooting. Until you get bored and just start stabbing people. You know, just to shake things up. Let's move. There are two kinds of bad. There's objective bad and subjective bad. And although the cover system's a bit wonky at times, and the AI's kinda rough, I, I didn't find this game objectively bad. The question's the subjective. With the Devil's Cartel, it all comes down to your taste and just how bored you are with the status quo. Or in other words, you like shooting fools, bro? 